We're up here at Yellowstone Canyon on August 24th. Um, we've set up camp. We've backpacked in here where we heard uh, the last five vocalizations uh, about three weeks ago. Um, I just strung our uh, food up in the tree. We're in bear country. We want to be bear aware. And we're also in squatch country. Um, hopefully I put it out of a bear's reach. Who knows? Um, I am going to uh, film uh, the tree that it's uh, set up under. Here's a game cam. And uh, I need to power it on. I'm going to go back and show you our campsite that we're uh, that me and Jenny staying in tonight. Um, Brody and Brody's girlfriend Odessa helped us set up here. Look, there's a current bush. There is so much food up here. But they helped us pack in our gear. And then me and Jenny's going to stay here tonight alone. Um, we feel like uh, the less amount of people, the better luck um, we'll have at bringing in a squatch. But this is the grove of trees that it yelled at us across the mellow or the haunting screams and so forth. And uh, here's our campsite. Um, I'm going to set up uh, or turn on game cams. We got a perimeter of uh, three game cams and one on the food. And uh, I really feel like Bigfoot. A lot of Bigfoot encounters besides the random ones where they run across the road in front of a random person. Um, the next most common that I've discovered in my research is um, a curious Bigfoot checking out your campsite. So uh, we're going to have a small perimeter of cameras. We got three of them set up. Here's the next game cam. Just make sure that's on now. You know, we want them on during the daytime even more camping. I mean, who knows what's going to come into to camp. And uh, I know uh, the Bigfoot's probably uh, see in the infrared spectrum. So uh, during the daytime might be the, your best bet at getting them on game cam. The infrared from the sun may help drown that out and make it harder for them to see. Here's the next game cam. So this game cam three, the one on the food. Let me set the other one up. Now if I can remember where the other one is at. Let's see. And there's Jenny. She's finishing setting up camp. That's where we're gonna be tonight. And there's Brody and Odessa. Odessa's Brody's girlfriend. She come up here to help us today. Do you guys, anyone remember where I put up that other game cam? I know, I'm such a targ. I see GPS everywhere I set them. Huh. Oh, I see it. I walked past it. I found it. Alright, there's the fourth game cam. You know, there's no rhyme or reason. I just set them up on uh, good trees that have a good visual of hopefully something that sneaks up on us. I mean, at night, if a Bigfoot sees where the triggers are, he could sneak up easily in a place where we're not. There's the final game cam. So all the game cams are armed. I've got um, three of them on video around the camp. And then um, the one by the food, it's specialty. It's got a, a really fast trigger. Um, for still shots, so um, I just left that on still shot. So anything messes with the food or comes around those current uh, those current berries around the food, it's gonna be in front of that camera. So we're gonna hike clear across there where all the structures are. I don't know if you guys can see the ridge over there, but I'm gonna try and pan over it slowly. We're gonna hike down into the ravine to the creek and then we're going to come up on the other side it rained for about two hours last night so we're hoping if there's any activity in there we can find some fresh prints and hopefully they'll be deep because of the the soft ground from the rain last night so uh yellowstone canyon august 24th and this is our backpack camping expedition I just want to show the viewers how rough it is getting in here. I mean, we're breaking trail, kind of making up our own trail as we go. We got the structures GPSed, so we're coming in from a different direction because we're 
camp in um, just south of the structures and uh, according to the GPS we're actually closer to them than the way we normally come in so we're making our way back in and gonna check out the area intently see if we can find some Bigfoot activity and hopefully uh, get the attention of a Bigfoot who um, we're hoping one will follow us out like they have uh, um, a couple of times Brody once and then uh, me Brody and Jenny another time it followed us out so be cool if we could get one to follow us back to our camp and mess with us tonight maybe a little bit stressful and intimidating but that's what we're out here for I'd really love to have one try and intimidate us out of here tonight because we're kind of stuck here for the night so but yeah we're just about inside uh, the structure territory I'll uh, film one of the structures once we get to it We're getting close to the structures, and uh, Jenny just saw some Bigfoot salad down here, so I thought I'd turn on the camera. Um, yeah, we've got a couple of shovels and stuff. When Brody got messed with about two years ago, he was in here with the shovel, and he's digging around and whatever, but um, we thought we'd bring a couple. We needed one back at camp for our uh, toilet and our fireplace anyway, so... We got our spade with this, and uh, we're coming in from a different angle. We're on an animal trail, and uh, we're pretty close to being inside the structures. Um, we may, in fact, have already passed a couple that we're not on the track for, but we're here to find new ones anyway and then explore the area for footprints and any type of... Uh, habitat such as food um, we've already found uh, all kinds of raspberries again and currants and uh, I don't know we don't know if any of these mushrooms up here are edible but we found about a half a dozen variety of mushrooms um, there's one right there and there's all kinds of them up here Oh, yep, I see the Bigfoot salad Jenny was talking about. This milkweed, it's starting to dry up, but that's all right. I mean, this was something good to eat about a month ago. Um, now uh, all the berries are starting to come into season. Um, looks like something may have even bedded down right here on some of this uh, milkweed. But, yeah, we're pretty much inside the structural area. I haven't seen one of them yet, but we're in its territory and let's see if we can strike it in its interests and hopefully it'll vocalize or something at us. Yellowstone Canyon. Odessa seen something black, so we decided to investigate and it looks like a bull moose. Yeah, you guys see that? We're back in Yellowstone Canyon and the moose is eyeballing us. But yeah, there's a bull. We saw a lot of bear scat in here. We were wondering if she's seen a, a bear, but it's a bull moose. He's a good sized bull. And I wouldn't have walked up to him like this. It's not the rut yet. And this is about as close as I want to get to him anyway. But there he goes. Um, we went into the structures and we've been looking for uh, um, anything Bigfooty. Um, we just found the moose. And now uh, we're heading back. We're going back to camp. It started raining on us when we were back looking at the structures and looking for any recent footprints unfortunately the only thing that we found was a massive uh, bear paw it was uh, 
a hind leg of a bear. I took a couple of still photos of it. Hopefully the still photos turned out. But um, yeah, we're gonna get back to the camp and then Odessa and Brody are gonna make the long drive home. And me and Janie's gonna camp up here tonight and hopefully we get to hear something uh, Bigfooty. We just got done seeing the moose about 10 minutes ago. Um, we seen some deer earlier, but now uh, I don't know if you viewers can see it. I could, we could see it with our naked eye, but we found um, about an 11 inch print, close to 12 inches long. It's more than 11, but uh, it looked like it stepped right over this log and stepped down right here, and then. I, I can kind of see its toes right here. The next step. And they hear something up ahead of us. That print looks pretty fresh, you guys. It may be up ahead. Um, earlier when we were coming up this hillside, I heard something make kind of a whoop type noise. And then I saw movement. And it was up in this direction. And then uh, just not too long ago, Odessa said seen something black moving through the um, woods. So we cut around and cut off a bull moose that I got a little bit of film of. But um, yeah, I'm not really going to measure this stride because the next print isn't even a full print. I, it it probably is the toe area and its heel probably hit the log. I don't know if you can see the toe area right here. I mean, that's, it's not an extremely long stride, but it went from there to where that stick is. But, um, there's another one over here. You guys found another footprint? Okay, we're gonna move up to the next one. We're following one that has a uh, uh, 11, almost 12 inch track. Um, three weeks ago, we found uh, one that was about 10. It could have been a little bit bigger. Part of the hill was, wasn't was um, as defined as it could be. Where was the next one you guys found? That one. Yeah, they're not as definitive as that one that was over by the log because it probably leaped the log and hit pretty, pretty hard right there. Um, just gonna scan around and kind of show you where we're at. Last week we found three 17 inch footprints up on the top by the springs and uh, we photographed and filmed one of them. And uh, yeah, we're kind of heading back in the direction of camp and you know, we were kind of like, gosh, we didn't find any footprints in the structure area, but we just found some. Um, that's definitely a large, larger footprint than any one of us have. And, uh, I, I just think it's insane crazy if someone's running around back here barefoot. So, we might be on the squatches again today. So, we're going to keep it down as we move up ahead. It looks pretty fresh. It might have moved up ahead of us. Just a few hundred yards after we found the the um, the ten or excuse me the eleven inch footprints, um, we found this big old tuft of hair. We don't know what it is, if it's moose or or bear or whatever, but we're gonna collect it. We're gonna collect it, and I don't know if we ever run into anyone that's an expert on that. They can put it under a scope and see if it matches up with any known hairs. There's some gray and stuff running through it. We did see some 17 inch footprints. Do you want to just collect it, Jenny? Here. <clears throat> we found some more. Well, we might we might as well collect them both. Yeah, um, we found a 17 inch footprints last week. So if that happens to be Bigfoot, maybe it's a 17 inch or maybe he's an old one with gray running through him. I don't know, the, the alpha male up here is pretty damn raunchy. Look, there's more hair. 
It's gray too. There's so much gray through it. That's weird. I've never seen a moose with gray hair and it just doesn't ever seem that texture. And this time of year, moose have uh, short hair. That moose that we just saw had short Holy hair. Holy hell. It looks like something scalped. Uh huh. Well, we're not sure if this is Bigfoot hair, but if we can find an expert to analyze it for us, we're in, we'll be more than willing to give them a sample. There's a stick. Across uh, this meadow, in those trees over there, is where we saw a moose, and it was a young moose. He's just a couple years old. He had a pretty good rack for his age and everything, though, but um, he definitely didn't have uh, gray running through him, and he didn't have this long hair. And uh, we just found some Bigfoot footprints. They weren't the biggest, but um, the juveniles, the, the juveniles, in my opinion, just aren't as good as the adults at covering up their footprints. So if this 11 inchers running around with mommy or daddy, I'm sure they're doing their best job to cover up. If you guys watch, you know, Bigfoot videos and trackways, especially in the snow, you see it every opportunity they're covering up their footprints. And uh, we seem to find more juvenile than adult and I really believe the reason is the juveniles really aren't proficient at covering up their footprints so anyway we just uh, took two hair samples it was long um, I smelt one of the samples and just really couldn't smell anything I haven't smelt the second sample yet but we've got it bagged Jenny did the, her best at um, trying to uh, collect it without touching it at all with human hand so hopefully it's not contaminated but um even if it is contaminated at least we can have the hairs to compare to unknown uh, animals or primates so it's turned out to be a pretty good day we're only uh, about a half a mile um, from the um, from the vehicles and then uh, from the vehicles it's another half mile into the forest to where me and Jenny's gonna be uh, camping uh, we hauled all of our gear up there um, this morning and we're gonna stay the night back in there and hopefully something happens I'm really excited we have an unknown hair sample with a lot of gray running through it it is strange all right we're heading back we can come back and get the cast tomorrow. I think we should cast this one. Um, we've been uh, seeing the juveniles tracks up here the last three weeks. Um, 11 and 10 inches long. Um, we think we just found the female. Um, last week we found the male 17 inches and I believe this is the female. This is a good uh, 15 inch footprint. Um, you can really see the big toe on the one side. But we've been looking for the mamas up here because I'm, I'm pretty sure the 17 inches, the male, and uh, so we've been wondering where she's at. but. Yeah, we found a pretty decent one. And there's another one further up that Brody found. Do you know where it's at, Jenny? Is it as good as that one? Where is it at? Okay. You know what, that one looks like the juveniles. That looks exactly like the one that we found back at the log that we filmed. That one looks like the, the 11 inch or so. I think this is the juvenile walking hand in hand with the mom. We've got, she's right over there by Jenny and then right over here by Odessa is uh, the juvenile footprint I'm gonna get a couple of angles so viewers can see it hopefully but there's the baby well the juvenile and it's probably a larger juvenile 11 inches is probably bigger than any one of us and then down here and this one I measured it, it's almost six inches wide. It's a little over five and a half inches wide. This footprint is up near uh, the toes or the ball of the foot. On a person, it would be like the ball of a foot. But um, yeah, this is a massive footprint. I'm gonna get my foot up there. I mean, I'm in my boot size 10 and uh, it's still a good uh, inch longer than my boot and then I've got a four inch wide foot and this foot's almost six inches wide. This is a great 
footprint of a female. We're considering uh, casting this and let it sit overnight and picking it up sometime tomorrow. I'm going to get some still photos of it. But um, I just, here's an old uh, fence right here. Um, it looks like someone homesteaded here years ago. All these fences are falling apart. And then here's the woods. And Brody's up ahead looking for more footprints and whatnot. But anyway, we found the hair not too far from here. And then uh, we found an, a really good 11 inch footprint that we filmed. And now we found the 11 inch are kind of going in hand in hand with this one. So. I'm sure this is mama. We finally found mom. This is where we've stayed the weekend. It's August 25th. <laughs> We're getting our stuff dried out. We got rained and snowed on and a little bit of hell last night. But um, I'm walking over to our bear bag. Um, we've had a great weekend. We've uh, found uh, several 11 inch footprints and uh, tracking those 11 inch uh, f footprints we come across um, a couple of very large samples of hair and I'm sure it wasn't the 11 inch that left those behind because there was a lot of gray in this sample of hair. Very long coarse hair um, type of hair I've never seen before. I'm heading out to my bear bag. Um, we're going to have uh, some oatmeal for breakfast and then we're going to um, backpack out of here. But anyway, after we found uh, that uh, hair, um, we found uh, a 15 inch footprint hand in hand uh, with the 11 inch footprint. And the 15 was uh, so good that we found uh, late last night that um, we went ahead and uh, casted it and we just left it. We're going to have to go pick up that cast here in a moment or a moment, <laughs> probably an hour or two after we hike out of here. But anyway, there's our. <laughs> There's our bear aware. It's where we've kept our food. Up in the, let me see. Oh, there it is. Sorry, I'm not a very good cameraman. Anyways, we strung it up in the tree there. I know a bear can still get at it, but you know, there's so much food and berries and stuff up here. Why would they want to climb up a tree to get our food? So yeah, I'm gonna let our food down and me and Jenny's gonna have some oatmeal getting all of our stuff dried out then we're gonna um, we're gonna backpack down um, to the vehicle and uh, put all of our stuff away and then we're gonna go collect that uh, 15 inch cast and we've got that hair sample I swear we've got about eight ounces of this long musky smelling hair um, we uh, found it uh, tracking uh, what we believe was a juvenile Bigfoot. Uh, the juveniles don't cover up their footprints as well as uh, the adults do. So I'm sure the mother was hand in hand with the juvenile all along. But she did make a mistake and we got her footprint and it was a castable one. And uh, hopefully that hair sample belongs to her 15 inch footprint. Maybe she is old. There's a lot of gray through it. Perhaps it's... Uh, the male, um, I've seen a lot of fur. Um, my dad um, is a, a mountain man. Um, he does all the mountain man stuff and he has a lot of bear coats and so forth, bear fur. And uh, this was not bear fur that we found. It's really human looking, uh, the roundness of the hair. It's, it's very, very coarse and it's uh, very long. So uh, hopefully we can get an expert to take a look at that and, and analyze, it, analyze it for us. But it's such a large sample that when we get home, we're going to put on the rubber gloves and uh, we're going to try and uh, be a very clinical about it and we're going to split it up into several samples and if uh, we get uh, more than one uh, 
scientist that wants to check it out or someone that specializes in hair um, we'll get those samples to them and see if they can f identify if it comes from a known animal or if it comes from an unknown primate but heck it, it looks like a great uh, sample of hair to me I'm pretty excited it's uh, the first time that we've come across hair and it was just a couple of big wads of long coarse black and gray hair and so anyway we're gonna make us some breakfast and uh, pick up our game cams I've had a game cam on uh, this bag of food the whole time in case anything uh, messes with it this and that we'll get it on there um, we definitely put the food within the realms of large squatch to reach and if he wants our food so be it you can have it but um, you're gonna give us uh, a video or a picture while you're doing it you know what I mean so after finding the hair um, we measured last night I didn't bring my tape down um, all of our backpacking and cleaning up our backpacking camp and stuff um, this is a 15 inch long and at the widest it's about six inches long um, footprint we believe it's the female that we haven't found her footprint up here yet but um, um, the 11 inch footprint um, led to it so uh, we casted this last night and we're back down here this morning uh, collecting it hopefully the bottom looks better than the top we were kind of sloppy uh, the art of casting um, I've got my GPS unit next to it and Jenny's got um, her color picks Nikon camera next to it for size comparison but this footprints 15 inches long um, by uh, at the widest about six inches wide um, we figured that the prints were uh, kind of fresh because uh, the night before it rained really hard for two hours on Friday night and we found this on uh, Saturday the 20th of uh, August 2013 and um, um, it led the 11 inch or led right to this one um, we think the juveniles aren't as careful about hiding their footprints so they're using their track and it led us to its mama we've gotten the 17 inch footprints before but anyway that hair was black with a lot of gray in it if it is indeed it uh, turns out to be um, possible Bigfoot um, hair um, it may be the moms I mean 15 inch footprints really big for a female in my opinion <laughs> Um, I just want to walk up here. Last night we filmed the footprint of the 11 incher and uh, it was right past this log and um, right next to this old homesteader fence. I mean, this is really old. Um, a lot of it doesn't even exist anymore. Um, got our spade up here to dig up that print. Um, anyway, right about here i mean you can kind of make it out yesterday we could tell it was the 11 inch or the toes and everything but after the rain and a little bit of snow and hell last night you can't even tell and uh anyway so it it rained a lot harder friday night than it did last night so it washed the prints pretty much away I mean, we'd have walked right past this one without even a second look and it was definitely the 11 incher that we've been following and that 11 incher is walking hand in hand with mom there's moms you know that's my theory through observation is we got mom's footprint right there and we've got it casted we're about ready to pull it up um I'm saying probably a half hour before we actually found the hair, um, me and Jenny could find uh, smell a really strong, musky, stinky odor. Okay? And it's a smell that I just do not identify with at all. It's not in my data bank of smells. And we smelt that. Well, anyway, after uh, collecting that hair, we could smell that musky smell on the hair. So I'm thinking whatever we smelt last night before uh, finding this casted footprint or this footprint that we're casting 15 inches and uh, we found the hair and this after smelling that smell so hey maybe we were close enough to smell squatch last night so yeah this has been a great study area so far we kept tracking uh, the 11 incher and uh, we found it hand in hand with a 15 incher I just pulled up the the cast and I 
left my tape back at the vehicle sorry I did measure this uh, last night when we found it but um, we got a GPS and a camera next to it for comparison at the widest point it's six inches wide and I'm gonna lay I mean it didn't sink in too deep the substrate if you can't tell there's a lot of rock in the soil but there's the side of the cast I'm gonna lay it right back down to where we pulled it up but you know slowly after time a lot of the soil on the bottom of this cast will wear off you know you're told not to remove any of it there was actually some hairs in it that we would like to compare the hair to that we tried to get into the cast we'd like to compare it to the sample we took to see if it's the same type of hair but um, we just poured the cast right on the hair so um, we'll uh, put this in a bag and uh, we'll keep all the soil and hopefully the hair and I believe the hair is probably stuck in the bottom of the cast so it'll probably always be a part of the cast but it'll be nice to see if it's the same type of hair that we found in that mat perhaps you know this 15 inch is a, a very old uh, mother and uh, she's going gray there was a lot of gray through it we do have footage of that hair that we took a picture of um, can't wait to get it home and take a closer look at it and see if we can find someone that knows what they're doing to analyze it I'm gonna put the cast back where we found it there you go 15 inch footprints the first uh, 15 inch footprint I've ever even filmed took a picture of or casted so I'm very excited I've I've got uh, 17 7 10 11 12 and a half and uh, 14 inch prints I've seen but this is my first 15 incher